my name is Trisha Fishbein. I'm a fourth year student here at Northwestern. I study civil engineering and I'm pursuing a minor in architectural engineering and design. When I'm not walking backwards giving tours, though, I'm singing a cappella with the Northwestern undertones. Uh, today, I'm standing in the Ford Motor Company Engineering Design Center. I'm super excited to show you around this building today. Uh, following campus safety and campus protocol, I will be keeping on a mask for the entirety of the tour. Uh, campus has done a really great job of keeping each other safe, the students, faculty, staff, everyone involved. So I want to make sure that I am demonstrating that on today's tour for you. Uh, to talk a little bit about the Ford Motor Company Engineering Design Center, this building has been open on campus since 2005. It was following a $10 million grant from the Ford Motor Company, and we're super happy that it is on campus. It's become a hub for engineering, design, entrepreneurship, and everything in between. Uh, we are currently standing in the atrium of the Ford building. Uh, so as you can see, there's a great showcase of student work. We have a student organization uh, that builds race cars, builds off-roading cars. So that's a great showcase of that. You can also see uh, that the building is LEED certified. Uh, it is the first building on campus to have the silver LEED certification. I'm super passionate about sustainability. So it's great that our campus cares about that. And this building is super beautiful and super sustainable. Can't wait to show you the rest of it. Um, and as you can see, you can also see a sliver of the downstairs fabricating and prototyping lab, which we'll see a little bit later on the tour. Um, so that is a little bit about this atrium. I love that the campus, uh, I love that Ford has done a, job, a great job of showcasing student work right within the atrium. You'll definitely see that throughout the tour a little bit more. Uh, so with that, I would love to kind of get going into the building a little bit more. Okay, so we have now walked into the building a little bit. As you can see, we actually have some prototyping, some fabricating going on. This is called the Corner Makery. It's a little studio uh, within the Ford Motor Company Engineering Design Center. Uh, you can see active 3D printers. One thing that I love is that I was never involved in 3D printing. I never knew how to do it. I never knew how to get involved. Uh, luckily, they do 3D printing trainings every single week, uh, which is really, really helpful. And as you can see over here, there's Polaroids of every single student that has ever 3D printed uh, or ever has been trained on it. So super, super great way to get involved. Um, and you can tell a lot of people do it. So this, the expansion of makerspaces is actually part of a recent expansion that Ford has undergone. This expansion didn't just include makerspaces. It also included five new design studios and included new shared conference rooms, new breakout rooms. They also added hotel style offices for any entrepreneurs that may be visiting, maybe lecturing um, here on campus. So definitely a really, really great thing. I've spent a lot of time in Ford over the past couple of years. So it's been really nice to kind of see the building undergo these changes and change to fit needs as students have wanted to see more in the building. Uh, so that is definitely something that's really, really great about it. Um, there's also a really great center within the Ford engineering building uh, besides all of the design opportunities called the Farley Entrepreneurship Center. And this is a really great place for students who might be interested in entrepreneurship. This is housed within the McCormick School of Engineering and uh, Applied Science. However, you do not need to be an engineer by any means to utilize it here. Um, my friends Rishi and Jay actually take a class called Designing Your Personal Brand. They're both super into YouTubing and they want to learn how they can best establish their brand and gain a following. And this class is specifically tailored to that. So by no means do you have to be an engineer to take this class. That's kind of a true statement to anywhere at Northwestern, uh, but that's especially true for the Farley Center. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship to any degree, you can definitely get involved with those courses. Uh, and with that, I would love to take you downstairs to see some of the fabricating and prototyping space that we have. So we are currently standing right outside of the prototyping lab in the Ford building. We're currently in the basement. Uh, so this is a really, really cool space. I love bringing my tour groups here to see actual working students. Of course, right now you might not see as many working students, but again, we like to keep each other safe. You can see all the tables in here have been separated into pods. So all the students that are in here are maintaining distance from each other. Uh, the shop is a really, really cool space and I've spent a lot of time here in the past four years. The main exposure that I've had was actually right off the bat through a class called Design Thinking and Communication. We'll talk a little bit more about that course later on in the tour. However, one main component of that course is that you will be trained in the shop. So you undergo two quarters of shop training. The first is a more basic thing. You get trained on everything kind of 
in front of where this like gate would go down to the heavier machinery. So that would be your mills and your lathes, which come the second round of shop training. Uh, but that being said, if you need a mill and a lathe, your first quarter of DTC, the shop trainers here are super helpful. We have four adult shop trainers and a ton of student shop trainers. These are the people that are going to be teaching you how to use all this equipment. My group really wanted to learn how to use the laser cutter in the back of the shop. And all we had to do was just ask someone to show us how to use it. Um, and that was super, super helpful and so easy. One thing that I also love about the shop is that you don't need to um, uh, be limited by the scope of your class to be able to use it. Once you're trained on it, if you have a personal project that you wanna go ahead and work on in the shop, you're totally welcome. Oftentimes engineers want to build their own like coat hangers in their um, residential halls or, their, um, or they want to do like Bluetooth speakers that dance to the, whatever music they play. People have crazy ideas and this is definitely the space to do that. Um, additionally, if you look over here, this is the mechatronics lab. Um, I personally had a great experience with the mechatronics lab my first year. I'm not an electronics person or computer person whatsoever, but my design thinking communication project for one quarter required me to build a massage boot for a man with multiple sclerosis. Um, and we really wanted to make this an automated boot. So the people in the mechatronics lab were super helpful in teaching us how to solder electric boards because I had never learned how to do that and I had never had exposure to that. So um, truly anything in these spaces, if you want to use it, they are so excited to show you. And beyond that, these are people who are professional designers, professional entrepreneurs. So if you need any help with anything to any degree, they are ecstatic to help you. That is what they're here for, whether that's ordering parts, whether that's giving you advice on how to build things. Uh, possibilities are kind of endless in there. You just kind of got to ask and then you will receive. <laughs> Uh, with that, I would love to take you upstairs a little more to show you other parts of the building. So as I touched on earlier, my first exposure to the shop and to the Ford building in general was through a class called Design Thinking and Communication. Every first year engineer takes this class as part of the design first or the engineering first curriculum which basically means that you are getting exposure to what being a real engineer is like from the first day that you step onto campus. Uh, we'll definitely get to why I love this and why this was part of the reason that I chose Northwestern at the end of the tour. However, this was really cool because you're working on a real world project for a real world client. So you are in a group of three other students in a class of around 16 people and you have two professors. So right off the bat, a great example of that faculty to student ratio. These professors are super helpful. You have one for design and one for um, English. So the design professor is really great and give you advice on your prototypes, maybe your ideas for what you want the physical product to look like. The um, English professor is really great for helping you with your presentations, helping you with your interviews with clients, setting up observations. So super, super great um, duality there. These professors work great together and they work great with the students. Uh, so over the course of that 10 weeks, you'll actually go through the whole design process. And I know that that might sound a little intimidating, uh, but it was super exciting. So you go through this twice and you kind of get a second go at it uh, and you get a new project and a new group of students and a new class. Um, and it's really nice to have a lot of projects going on in the same room because you kind of get to bounce ideas off of the other groups. You get to listen to the successes and the failures of other groups, um, which is really, really helpful in kind of helping you go through that design process yourself. Uh, so I really, really love design thinking communication. I mentioned that one of my projects was designing a massage boot for a man with multiple sclerosis. I also had a project where we made um, a safety bed for a child with a um, genetic disorder that uh, came along with decreased safety awareness. His mom was really scared that maybe in the middle of the night he would get out of bed and get into some trouble and she didn't want to lose any sleep worrying about him and she wanted to make sure that he was safe. Uh, so we actually came up with like a little quarter size model of what the bed would actually look like. And then they picked their favorite to kind of move forward with and do full prototyping. Our favorite story is that there was actually a project with the Shed Aquarium where students were tasked um, with helping at the Shed Aquarium with their penguins. Uh, the penguins were slipping off the rocks because they were laminated. Uh, so they actually came up with these little purple booties that penguins would wear while they were walking on the rocks so that they didn't slip. Um, purple for Northwestern, of course. And this group actually did end up getting patented. If you were going to the Shed Aquarium now, you could see penguins wearing these booties. You could also see them at aquariums around the country. That being said, that's definitely not the purpose of DTC. The purpose is to go through that design process, whether it works, whether it doesn't work. 
Um, and kind of, uh, I've never really heard of a, uh, a class that didn't end in a success story because truly just finishing that design process in itself is a success. And I think that there's something to be said about having a class full of 18 year olds that might not have any engineering experience kind of working through that themselves. Uh, it's a really great experience to kind of just get hands on and see what being an engineer is actually like. So that's a little bit about DTC. I would love to take you around more of the building. Really quick, this is one of my favorite parts of the Ford building. This is a little passageway into our Technological Institute on campus. If you are an engineering student here, you'll definitely spend a lot of time in the building that we're in now. However, the Technological Institute will probably be another one of your homes. This is a really, really great passageway. Sometimes, spoiler alert, it does get a little bit chilly in Chicago. So it can be nice if you are an engineer or anyone that is a STEM major to kind of run between these two buildings for classes and not have to step outside. I know this is super, super nice. Um, the Technological Institute is also connected to a variety of other buildings. This might be for research. This might be the MUD Library, which you can go to to get some work done in between classes. So this building is actually really, really huge. I'm sure a tour of that building would probably take about three hours. It's a big one. So um, yeah, so I just want to make sure I pointed out that little passageway because it's pretty cool. Awesome. So we are currently standing in the hive. I wanted to make sure that we took you all inside a classroom space today. And this is definitely the one that I wanted to choose. The hive is a really, really great space. Uh, you often see guest lecturers in here. You often see different workshops. You all uh, often see different information sessions happening in this room. Oftentimes, uh, well, one first thing I want to mention about this space in general, this building, is that there's a lot of really great places to set up client meetings. Uh, as I told you before, this is a hub for entrepreneurship and design. So oftentimes you are seeing real world clients. So they wanted to make this a space where you could bring people and it would seem professional and you can conduct meetings as if you were a professional. So uh, this is definitely one of those spaces that I would consider to be a place where you could bring clients. Another thing that I love about the Ford building in general, and one thing that you often see happening here is engineering career development. So this is a really, really great thing on campus. Engineering career development specifically has helped me a lot. They have a variety of different opportunities uh, for students on campus to get involved with career opportunities. They have resume open houses. They have cover letter open houses. Uh, they have workshops on how to dress business casual and business professional because those are two apparently crazy different things. Um, I personally had no clue how to find a job when I was a first year student. I literally took my mom's resume and copy and pasted my name over and then the little bit of experience I had working. And that was kind of what I went with. And I was so thankful for engineering career development who actually showed me how to actually make one. This was super, super helpful. Um, and I also went to a variety of career fairs with engineering career development. My advisor kind of showed me what companies that I should look at based on my interests. I'm really interested in construction management, specifically within civil engineering. So she kind of looked through the list and helped me figure out which companies on those would be the most viable fits for me so that I would kind of know who to have my eye out for at the career fair and research ahead of time. Um, so that actually connected me to the internship that I've had for the past two summers, which I have loved so much. And it's all thanks to engineering career development. This is just one example of the advisor, advisors that you're gonna have on campus though. You will have that career advisor. Another important one is going to be your academic advisor, which is also housed within Ford. So I had a first year academic advisor. His name was Professor Birdwell. He was so awesome. Uh, one thing that I love about the engineering program specifically is that you can come in undecided as an engineer. You can say, I know that I wanna do this, but I might not know specifically what I want to do. Um, so the first year advisors are really, really great. They split up the entirety of the first year class. Um, and this is awesome because a lot of people don't know what they want to do. And these are really great resources for helping you navigate that. I remember I had a mild interest in civil environmental engineering. So they enrolled me in a zero credit course called Introduction to Civil and Environmental Engineering. Um, and in that course, they brought in professors from the department and people from uh, that are working in the city of Chicago to kind of talk about what they do in their field to kind of help you get a grasp for if any of it is kind of up your alley, if any of it is of interest to you. Um, and these first year advisors are also really great with helping at the college transition in general. I was really nervous coming from high school to college about what the learning differences might be, what the workload differences might be. And they gave me just really fundamentally great college advice. I think one thing 
the most valuable thing that I've learned at Northwestern is that professors and advisors, they all went to college too once. They all know what it's like to be a college student, especially a college student who studies engineering. So this was a really valuable lesson for me. And the one thing about advisors that I wish that I knew when I was a first year is use them as much as possible. That is what they're there for. They're so helpful. They have so much advice. Um, these are just two examples of the advisors that you're going to have while you're at Northwestern. Uh, but they're definitely two of my favorite examples to bring up. With that, I would love to go wrap up the tour um, in the little stairwell. Okay, so I have loved taking you around the Ford Motor Company Engineering Design Center this morning. Uh, before I wrap up the tour, as we do with all of our tours at Northwestern, I wanted to tell you why I picked Northwestern. Um, if you're applying, it's the one supplemental essay question we ask. Uh, so it's just two words, really simple. Why Northwestern? Uh, for me, it's something that I've really honed in a lot today, and that's this idea of engineering first that Northwestern has. Uh, you take a class right off the bat, as I said, called Design Thinking and Communication, and this class was actually the reason that I chose Northwestern. I was really looking for a place where I could have real-world experience right off the bat. I always thought that I was going to have four years with my nose in a textbook and then walk out into the world and then have a job and start doing real work. And I loved when I toured Northwestern that I actually had a place that... Um, valued hands-on learning right off the bat. So this was a huge part of why I chose it. Additionally, uh, it's a really, really great place to be involved with not just engineering. As you can just see in this building alone, there's a blend of engineering, there's a blend of design and entrepreneurship. And that's a true testament to Northwestern in general. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the tour, I sing acapella. My tour guide was actually an engineer who sang acapella and that was a crazy good sign to me. I was like, this is the place that I meant to be. You can do both of those things and it's encouraged, it's, it's accepted, it's not weird. Um, and I think that this building definitely showcases that Northwestern really does want to blend all of these things together. There are no walls between them, which I have loved during my time here. I applied early decision in Northwestern because I knew that it was my number one school. And if you are like, yes, that is my number one school, I would definitely recommend to do the same. However, regular decision will always be there. Um, so yeah, it's been my dream school to have been here. I'm really sad to leave, but I was really, really excited to take you around this building today. And with that, go catch.